Dr. Walid Dus will share his experiences building and running Ansari Chat and will discuss the opportunities and risks of associated with integrating AI and Islam. Dr. Walid is the generative AI lead at Canva, where he leads the company's LLM efforts. And before joining Canva, um, Dr. Walid worked at Startups and Uber, where he led overall system architecture, evangelized machine learning, and led the location and maps teams. He previously worked at Google, where he founded the Android location and sensing team and was responsible for the Blue Dot feature and ML algorithms underlying products like Google Fit. So I'm really excited and delighted to welcome you, um, Dr. Walid. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for the warm welcome. I hope you can hear me clearly. If there's any issues, please let me know. So let me, let me present uh, the slides today. I want to first thank the organizers of this conference. May Allah bless them uh, for inviting me and for setting up this very interesting topic that I think many of us uh, are dealing with in a practical way. So what I wanted to do in this presentation is dive into the present reality of Quran and I. It's one thing to kind of talk about this question in a theoretical way, but it's another thing to see what the technologies are possible of with it. Uh, I have a side project aside from my day job called ansari.chat, uh, and you can access it on the web. And really what I've tried to do with this is build um, an Islamic uh, assistant based on the current cutting edge technologies. So let's Rather than just uh, so, bis so let's dive right in. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabb Shrahi Sadri Rasuli Amri Wahlalokta Tuminisani Yabkahu Kauli. So what I'll talk about today is that this is not a theoretical prospect. Um, uh, we can build these AIs now. You can use them now. They're accessible to everybody. There's one slight issue, which is the cost of these systems. But aside from that, it's a very practical system. And so what I'd like to do is give you a practical example. I uh, hope, inshallah, to have a few minutes for questions and answers at the end. But if we don't, um, please feel free to contact me afterwards. What I'd like to do is begin with a demonstration of what Ansari can do. And then from there, dive into the questions about the opportunities and challenges. Because once we understand them, that's how we learn. Um, so moving on to like one um, kind of leading thought on this topic is that I really wanted at the remainder of this conference and this discussion to be grounded in reality. And I didn't want to either fall into the trap of underestimating the technology and saying it will never be useful, nor overestimating the technology like, you know, it does this challenge the creative ability of Allah, but to consider the benefits and the risk of this technology uh, holistically. There's a principle of fiqh that you may know, which is a hukmu ala al-shay' faram min tasawwur. In other words, a ruling on a matter to give a ruling, Islamic ruling on a, on a matter, you must have a proper understanding of it. And so that's what I'm trying to do in this first part of the conversation. So I'm gonna switch now to Ansari um, and we, let's have a look at it. So I have some pre-prepared uh, conversations here, but to give you an example of what Ansari is, it's a very simple interface. I wanna quickly check that you folks can see it. Someone give me a thumbs up or indication. Yes, we can see it. Excellent. So it's just a system where you can come to. It's at beta.ansari.chat. And you can ask any question, you know, what, you know, it's not just, but you can ask what are the five pillars and it will tell you what they are and so on. So it, this is a conversational interface. The idea here is you can um, have a conversation with the system based on knowledge of Islam. And, and so, you know, let's start with a simple one when it comes to the Quran. You know, we may have a question like, how many times is the Quran is is Quran mentioned in the Quran? And sure enough, it gives us the two verses that it mentions, right? Um, but we might ask, you know, in the first verse and the second verse, how is the usage different? And sure enough, we find that you know, in the first verse, it's smart enough to understand that it's talking about coral in a in a uh, in a literal way, as in the coral you find in the ocean. But in the second verse. It's understood to be a metaphor describing the beauty of the, the, the maidens of Jannah, inshallah. So it kind of gives you an idea of the power of this system. Uh, let's look at another example of how we can use it. So 
Arabic, this tool has an amazing capability when it comes to Arabic and the, uh, you know, the science known as stuff or morphology of Arabics. So you can ask it a complex question, like to take the word atastabdiluna, which is a very linguistically complicated language, and it will break you down. It'll tell you the root word, which is badal. Um, and then it tells you the form of it, istafal or istabdal. And then it literally goes through and says the a is a question, the ta is a, um, uh, is a prefix and so on, helping you conjugation, conjugate it. And sure enough, you ask it, well, is that word found in the Quran? It tells you exactly the word where this was found. Uh, it's also uh, incredible for like just looking at the different opinions on a particular topic. So, for example, you can just type in iyak and abudu wa iyak and astain and say, um, give me the tafsirs and all of the different opinions that exist on it. And it gives you an example of just all the different tafsirs. It looks up Ibn Kathir, Tabari, Qurtubi, Saadi, gives you all of the different opinions, as well as contemporary scholars. So, and then you can do a deep dive, like in ask, you know, um, what did Ibn Taymiyyah say about this verse? Or ask, you know, um, you know, what, what did, uh, you know, what were the topics that were covered in his book on the topic? So this is starting to give you an idea of the power of the AI or Islamic digital assistance for helping people to understand the Quran and open access to the Quran. I want to talk, uh, uh, you know, another one of the important uh, powers of this is in translation and multilinguality. So, you know, help me translate Iyak and Abudu, Iyak and into five different languages. And you can choose whichever language you think is appropriate, and you can tell me if the translation is, is very good. Um, so, for example, we can say the translation into English. Um, and I can ask it, why did you use you alone do we worship and you alone do we seek help? And then it goes on to explain, for example, well, iyaka it implies exclusivity. And, and also the positioning starting with a noun instead of starting with the verb also indicates exclusivity. So it, it then can really understand the nuances of verses. Um, <clears throat> I also want to show how it can be used for uh, education. So, for example, you can ask a question like, explain the surah of Yusuf in, in, in language that a seven-year-old can understand. And tell, you know, or generate a lection of like a list of all of the different topics that can be covered. You know, that, you know, importance of being patient and so on. Um, and then you can even ask it to write it in the form of a poem to make it easy to read. And it's, it's actually quite readable as a poem. And... Um, you can also do things like generate trivia questions that you could use to give an exam. But this also exposes some of the issues. For example, it talks about the Quran uh, and the coat of Yusuf, which we know is an Israeli issue. So that gives you an example that sometimes there are risks here too. Um, and so it's, it, but then if you ask it to clarify, it will then clarify the topic. And you can always ask it to go back and say something like, well, I want to see the different questions that it can ask. Um, I want to give one more example of a partial mistake that these systems can can make. Um, so here's an example of a partial mistake. I asked it, is there a du'a specifically mentioned in the Quran for travel? And it says there isn't one. But, you know, for example, if I give it a hint, like subhanalladhi sakhara, it will then find the hadith. You know, it, it says that there's one that's well known. This is a correct hadith. Uh, this is a correct reference to that hadith that gives a general du'a for travel. But it forgets the one that's actually mentioned in the Quran. Um, and so it's based on the Surah of Zuhraf where that verse is mentioned. So I just give it a little bit of a hint. It knows what it's talking about. And you can ask it for clarifications of, of various aspects of the meaning. Um, and, and so I think this is an overview of like just some of the applications that we, 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 we can ask. Um, you can also do things like uh, for understanding nuances. So... When I have questions with the Quran, I now go to Ansari. So, for example, you know, you might be reading Surah Maryam and it's a, or Surah Ali Amran, and it says about Maryam, Wastafaki, Wataharaki, Wastafaki, Ala Nisa Al Alameen. Why is Istafa used twice? And then it goes uh, into an explanation based on uh, linguistic issues that indicate that the first one is, in fact, based on. The the um, is talking about Allah choosing her exclusivity, and the second one about her characteristics. 
And then the second one is more about her being chosen over all women of this world. And then you can ask it things like, well, what about Ishtaba versus Estafa? Uh, um, and it will give you inferences. And like, what are the differences between Ishtaba and Ikhtara and Estafa? All of these three words would be translated into the English word chose. But in Arabic, each one of them has different nuances. And this gives you access to that source of information. And finally, it's a really great research tool. So I remember vaguely something about how you have to understand the concept, you have to kind of understand its reality. And so I said there was something here about the fiqh on a worldly matter, and it, it actually extracted the principle that I showed a few slides ago. And so this gives you an idea of what these systems are capable of. With that, I'm gonna switch over to my presentation again and just review some of these different meanings, right? So I gave an example of how it can be used to look up issues with understanding of the Quran. And we talked about how you can use it to target uh, particular age groups. And we also talked about its linguistic abilities to go in translation. And those abilities are very, very significant. In fact, in some of the research that I've done with Dr. Saeed Saeed uh, in the UK, uh, we did an experiment where we tried to take 26 passages from uh, Ibn al-Jawzi's Zad al-Masir. And we took those translations. We did a machine translation and a human translation and the results were pretty similar in terms of a score. We did a blind test, so we didn't tell people which was the machine translation and which was the Muslim, Muslim uh, you know, the human translation. But even with human review, it, it's just ridiculously cheap. And that opens the possibility for translations of entire tafsirs into English, possibly with human review as well, on top of it, that have never, Ibn al Josi in its entirety has never been in, translated into English. So this really does show you the power of this technology. Um, and as I mentioned, you can also use it to restore, you know, you might remember something, but not completely. Uh, and so you can just give like a very small hint and it can help you with your memory if there's an issue with that. But that doesn't mean that there aren't challenges as well. So the first one, and I'm sorry, I've done what I can to um, remove the bias from it, but these systems can be biased and biased against Islam. What I'm showing here is one of the early AIs that came from a company called Databricks that shows that it was it was making completely erroneous statement, uh, statements about killing non-Muslims and saying it's actually um, um, it's actually our duty to kill non-Muslims. And then it keeps doing things like using the words facts, facts throughout the presentation that gives you the impression that this is something very definite. And so this is an example of the bias of these systems. A second is that these systems can hallucinate and just make stuff up that's completely wrong. So here's an example that I did with ChatGPT recently, which is I asked it, do I have to wash my knees as part of wudu? Um, and it came back and said, it's not obligatory, but it is recommended. So there's always the risk of these errors coming into the system. Now, a final one is that these systems can be deliberately used to generate falsehoods um, that can propagate online about the Quran, suggesting a hadith that may not have original sources, uh, make up articles that sound very emotionally compelling, but are not very worthwhile. Um, and so that's the third use case. Now, there are mitigations for these risks. So for example, you can reduce some of the bias issues by defining the character of the system. So for example, for Ansari, and Ansari is an open source project. That means that anyone can download it, help contribute to it. Um, there's a definition here that shows uh, the different uh, things that we define, including the scholars that we look to, the importance of sticking to the um, hadith and the Quran, being very careful about citing your sources, and so on. Right. So this is essentially the identity or the personality of the system. And that can help reduce the chances of bias. Uh, and then the other thing is that we can reduce the chances of um, hallucination by constraining the large language model to look at additional sources and constraining the answers. So for example, this is Ansari's architecture. And you can see we already talked about the system prompt, which you can think about as the identity. But another important characteristic is that we use three tools for searching different sources of information we can search the Quran, we can search the Hadith. 
So for example, if you go to chat GPT right now and say, how many times are corals mentioned in the Quran? It will come back and say once, but that's because it's not doing like a, a complete search of the Quran. If we provide the search results to it, then it will make fewer errors. And this is something that differentiates Ansari from these existing systems. So just to conclude, there are many, many opportunities for the Quran, including enhancing understanding, helping with Arabic and translations, using it to educate people, answering people's doubt, doubts, and so on. Um, you know, multilinguality, translating Islamic texts from Arabic to English. But there are challenges too. That is really around the hallucination, errors, deception challenges. And as we saw, it's very important that we create AIs that have an Islamic identity in terms of how they operate, uh, in that, that refer to authentic Islamic sources um, that are ecumenical and don't show biases to any Muslim group. Um, so really the question is really one of Maslaha versus Mafsada. That's where we find ourselves now. Uh, what is the balance between the challenges and opportunities? Can we apply principles like Amum al-Balwa? Because you can definitely see that our kids are already using these AIs every day. Does that mean that, you know, this means that there's now value to be had in offering an Islamic alternative to that? And that's really what I'm looking forward to and excited about hearing from all of you uh, in the rest of today's conference. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll uh, end my presentation. Oh, one more thing. Um, so you can try out Ansari at uh, beta.ansari.chat. You can email me for feedback and, you know, my past presentations, thoughts on AI, uh, some of it technical, some of it Islamic can be found on LinkedIn and you can, I'd be very happy if you were to connect with me on LinkedIn. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you for listening to me. Um, if the, if the moderators would allow, I'd love to take questions, but I understand that we may have time constraints as well.